Right folks, this is where the um, backboard is going uh, on this little lift out section I'm creating here. It'll go behind the blue clamps there and um, the idea is to have a fairly um, solid little box that can lift out and on the front I've got the retaining wall there that's got to be covered with brick, with brick paper and uh, yeah so I've, I've cut out um, the backboard already and uh, it does need a bit of a trim uh, on the top which I'll go into later but this is basically how it's going to fit across the doorway so you can you can see how it's going to flow there anyway the first thing you need to do is uh, go to modelrailwayscenery.com and uh, download yourself the uh, file that gives you uh, these three sheets of the the boot factory you'll also need to print off three copies of the two end sheets and uh, four copies of the middle sheet because we're going to build these up in layers and uh, all will become clear as we move along. Now we're going to do something a little different with this um, uh, kit um, so what I'm doing here is actually taking one of the end sections after it's been cut out and I'm scanning it on my printer so that I can get a copy of it in uh, it's actually in a PNG file uh, but you, what you need is a copy that you can put into a photo manipulation program so that you can work on it. The Boot Factory downloads as a PDF file and the other way you could do it is to go to an online converter and convert it from PDF to JPEG. Uh, you could al also use that method. So it's up to you whichever way you want to do it. This works quite well so that's the way I went. Right, when you've um created your new file then load it into your photo manipulation software and I use photo filter as you can see here and what we're going to do folks is we're going to uh, create uh, an end of the building with a bit of perspective on it so um, what we need to do is first uh, get the file into the software and then we can start working on it first things first though folks we need to get this image around the right way so we just go into the image uh, transform and uh, rotate it uh, 90 degrees so at least we're looking at it in the in the right sort of uh, uh, what would you call it orientation I suppose there we go that's better now we want to go in and uh, I want to change the left hand side of this building so that it looks like it's fading away off into the distance so to do that we go into image again and then transform and then down to trapezoid perspective and that will help us to achieve our goal here this is the shape I want and I'm working on the vertical axis and I've set the left distort to 150% and it looks like what you can see there. Now, now of course this will be treated in exactly the same way as the other parts of the building so we need three copies of this image uh, so that we can work on it and uh, make it all the same as the other parts of the building. We'll print this out in the photo filter print facility and the critical thing here folks is to uh, set the sliding percentage scale at 100% so that the image is the correct size and of course select the number of copies you want and away you go and they will print out at the correct size. Okay folks an option you've also got with this image is to add uh, some bitumen or cobblestone to the bottom the white triangle there to fill in the rest of the page 
Uh, I did this uh, for mine, uh, but it's up to you whether you do it now or do it later on. It's quite simple to do it later on. For this next stage, we're going to use the standard home laminator, and we're going to laminate a, one copy of each sheet. And what we're doing here is uh, an attempt at uh, creating some uh, glazing. There is glazing on the uh, model, however it will be just flat like all the rest of the model. So we're trying to get some shine onto this and make it look a bit better. So while your laminate is warming up, uh, just slip the copies into the uh, laminating pouches and make sure you smooth them out and get any air bubbles out and all that sort of thing so they're ready to go. On my laminator a little green light comes on when it's ready to rock and roll so we're set to go here. Make sure you feed it in gently on the A4 marks on the machine and it should pop out the other side all nice and shiny. For this sort of work folks you need a sharp blade, I'm using snap off blades here and you also need a straight edge. And with your snap off blades don't be afraid to get rid of them once they've gone dull because otherwise you'll stuff it up. So just take that advice, always try and have a nice sharp blade. So the first thing we're going to do folks for every sheet is uh, lightly score along the glazing bars on all the windows. Yes that's all the windows. So it's quite a big job. It doesn't take very long actually because they all line up pretty well. Uh, so you can see uh, just here an example. You now need to start working out your building sections and what needs to be trimmed off to fit on the backboard. So you need to look at that quite carefully now. You'll notice here that I've trimmed the backboard to suit the perspective section and uh, we're at the stage now where we're starting to glue the laminated uh, parts of the uh, kit onto the board. I use neat PVA for this and it seems to grip fairly well. You can see my bitumen strip has been left on there but it, that can be added later if it needs to be. While the glue is drying I like to lay the board on a nice flat surface and then I lay some baking paper on top of the uh, laminated uh, parts and then put some books on top just to keep it all nice and flat. You'll need a good supply of cereal box card, uh, one sheet for each uh, sheet of the printout. This leads us on to the next stage of building up the layers. I use a glue stick to uh, stick the sheets of paper onto the card and I rub the glue in uh, quite generously uh, and make sure that it's the whole bit of the card is really well covered before I even think about sticking the paper on. When sticking the paper on I work out from the middle, uh, I radiate out from the middle and make sure that there's no air bubbles under the card and then I use the soft cloth to sort of go over the whole thing to ensure that it's firmly stuck down especially along all the edges and really work it quite a few times to make sure that it's absolutely stuck in all areas. Then we trim off the excess card so that um, the sheets can be stacked on top of one another without fear of the glue sticking them together. I then lay them on a flat surface stacked on top of each other and I put something on top, in this case I've put my tin of watercolour pencils on top to keep them flat while they dry. Once the sections have all dried it's time to cut out the uh, appropriate parts that we need and uh, this is the first layer to go on top of the glazing so we're cutting out the window apertures. Uh, the next layer on top of this will be the brick columns in between the windows and uh, on this particular piece there will be a further one where the central section is with the writing. Once the parts are cut out I use a watercolour pencil to go over the cut edges to further improve the look of the model. The first layer can now be stuck over the glazing layer and again I use neat PVA for this and uh, it's placed very carefully onto the backboard and, um, and then weighted down as before with books and, um, and uh, baking paper. Uh, I lift the books off every now and then to make sure that none of the glue is seeping out, which it does from time to time, and I clean that off and then put the weights back on. Once that layer is firmly in place, well then you can start working on the next layer, which is uh, the brick columns. And uh, for the central section, there's a, a further layer uh, of brick columns with the um, um, sign up the top, the writing, uh, the name of the building. So it just follows the same procedure and uh, you've got to be 
careful about how you line these things up and make sure everything fits nice and tight. And in the end you finish up with something that looks like this. So you've got your glazing layer, then there's the brick layer above that, and then there's the columns, and in the central section there's also uh, a further uh, two columns with the, the name of the building on the top. Well folks, here it is. I mean, everything's only just sort of sitting there at the moment. Nothing's fixed in place, but uh, I'm pretty happy with how the, the background's turned out and the perspective looks all right. There'll be a, a building in front of that left-hand side to uh, further emphasize the perspective, I hope. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with how that's turned out. So uh, it all looks pretty good there to me. Now most folks would uh, seal this uh, work before actually sticking it on the board but in this case I wanted to actually even spray the windows as well to sort of dull them down just a, a bit. They had quite a bit of a shine on them and I just wanted to take a bit of that shine off so I've left the whole lot till the end and given it a good spray with the uh, clear finishing sealer here. In this shot you can see how um, scoring over the glazing bars sort of defines the uh, window panes in effect and the clear sealer has sort of taken a bit of the shine off the glass uh, as it would be in uh, an industrial area. There wouldn't be perfectly clean windows so I'm quite happy with how that's turned out. So um, that's how it's done folks, uh, that's the end of the story.